jazz saxophonist on Coast to Coast Tour, collaborates with Stevie Wonder, works with Prince, our next guest, Mike Phillips, on tonight's Charles Snyder Show. first night that you took the stage in New York it's part of your part of your history a good buddy had invited you to come play with him and then as, as they say rest is history you commanded the audience audience loved you raved about you I'd like to hear you describe that first night on stage in New York City yeah it was at a club called Wilson's and it was crazy because the line was out the door he invited me so I couldn't get up there and say hey 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 I'm here so what happened, the bouncer had like an altercation with um, somebody that, you know, was kind of crazy. So they started scuffling and I took my horn and went right in. Didn't stop. I went straight to the stage, pulled out my horn and started playing. So the guy who was the band leader, he just sees the horn player just start playing. He said, yo, man, who's hitting the keyboard player? So no, no, he's cool. He's cool. And I started playing. And lo and behold, you got baby face in the audience and it was oh, an intimate goodness. club. So uh, sometimes I think in life, man, if you just do something crazy, something will come out of it. And I exactly did it. I went, snuck in, went straight to the stage like I, like I belong there, opened up my horn and my case and started playing. Now, when you're making music like that, when you're playing the saxophone, what's going through your mind when, when you're doing what you do so well? Oh, man, you really don't want to know. Um, <laughs> music is such second nature to me that I mean I'm like if there's a television I'm watching it I'm watching Sports Center I mean it's the craziest thing it's like um, when music is such a part of you the most craziest things can come through your mind so I'm not really concentrating on music I'm I think I'm blessed with a gift to the point where if I think too much then the problems will happen it's free it's connected to me so I can now look around, I can be free to think about different things and it's all good. Before the show, you told us a little story about what it's like when Prince has your personal cell phone number. You, this gentleman knows Prince that well. Would you mind sharing with us again that well, anecdote? Well, well, what it's like working with somebody well, of the stature of Prince? Well, Prince is just like, he's an icon. He's like one of the greatest songwriters, musicians. He's, like, you know, you have people these days that call themselves a triple threat as far as the acting and the dancing and the singing, but he is the true triple threat as far as music scoring, as far as performing, as far as dancing, as far as singing. It's like all of these great things cross-pollinated into one individual. So anytime he reaches out to me, I'm just like, you know, with Prince, like I said, you know, he don't holler at you, he summons you. And then it's like when Prince put out a call and say, man, I need you at Paisley Park, I'm out. I'm like, chum. Hell, you know, so, I would too. Yeah, so it's, it's a great thing to be not just connected with him because who he is, the fact that he's a great musician, the fact that he has so much knowledge about the business of his gift, you know, because, you know, obviously in the music industry, sometimes, you know, you can get pimped, but he understands the business of his God-given gift, and he cross-pollinates the business with the gift, and that's what makes him such a special person. Critics hail your last album, your latest album, Uncommon Denominator. Very good reviews across the board. I've heard, I've read how the critics, and listened to it, and, and you know, I know what I like, know what the critics like. How would you describe your music? Um, man, it's just, you know, I, I look at these different boxes. You know, you have the box with the small jazz thing, then you got the contemporary, then you have the straight ahead, then you have this, and then you have that. And then every time I look at a box, I stay outside of it, but I look at it. I don't want to, I describe my music as something that doesn't belong in any category. It's about 
you know, I might just flip it on the next record. It'll be me, piano, uh, acoustic piano, bass, and drums. Play some straight ahead stuff. I'm, I've learned that in, in this business of playing, and to be true to myself as a musician, you have to be as well-rounded as possible. So it's contemporary. When I get on the stage, you know, some smooth jazz guy would invite a rapper to give them some urban credibility. I take the mic and I do it myself because I'm connected to hip hop. So I know the history of African Bambada, um, which leads up to Bronx when they would break dancing into LL Cool J and the Run DMC, but I also understand Dizzy Bird, Sonny Stitt, Sonny Rollins, Dexter, Dexter Gordon, um, Ornette Coleman. So Charlie Parker. Charlie Parker, I mean, you know, Cannonball Adley, um, Johnny Hodges. So when you put all of these things together from the music of hip hop, the, the, the music of jazz, and understand that these, this music culminated because of a social expression. People just wanted to have a form to express themselves with bebop. And also the things, when you grab the microphone, you talk about the things that are going in, about in your life and the things that are going on in the community. And that's Mike Phillips in a nutshell, not having any category, but taking these two great genres of expression, mixing them up and throwing some jazz on top of it, sprinkle a little bit of hip hop, throw some R&B in it, mix it up, and then, you know, I serve them. A fresh, <laughs> cup of, fresh cup of Joe or Mike Philly, you know what I'm saying? Well, what are you serving up for your fans, for your audience, the rest of this year, even, even looking into 2007? Um, 2007, I just, um, just did a three-year um, venture with BMW. Um, and, and what that will entail is we're going to be doing about um, private parties all around the country um, for their um, M-Class, new M-Series. M so that tour will be going on. It's called the Mike Philly Pop Jazz Tour presented by BMW. So people, all the BMW customers, it's private, but if you are a BMW customer, you will get an invite. And this is a great way to have jazz connect with the people who love great things. And that's one thing about jazz. It's like so elastic. You can take it and stretch it to hip hop, but then you can take it and stretch it to the wine and cheese crowd. And it's such a great thing for me to be a part of. So I'll be on with that, I'm finishing up my own dates. Um, I just finished the Tom Joyner Cruise and I'll be back on it for the Fantastic Voyage 2007. Um, working on a new record and doing dates with Stevie and Prince at the same time. So I'm like ju goodness. juggling a lot, but you know what? It wouldn't be possible without the dedication of the music that I love so much. So everybody can look at these things as far as, oh, look what he's doing, he's doing that. He signed the Jordan, he's doing stuff with BMW, but the music is first and foremost. Without that, then I wouldn't have the extension of the things that I'm doing, so I'm just happy. Congratulations on your continued success. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, no doubt, anytime, man. Mike Phillips, jazz saxophonist, Charles Snyder Show will be back. <laughs>